We turn our attention to cricket now on the Sportsmax Zone. Windy Stairs captain Craig Brathwaite and interim coach Andrew Coley sat down for a press conference on Wednesday ahead of the team's tour of Southern Africa. The Windies will play a two-test series against Zimbabwe and then an all-format series against South Africa. Brathwaite wasn't shy about saying what the Windies needed to improve if they are to be successful on both tours. It's, it's, it's not a secret, you know, what, what we're going to get in South Africa. Um, and it's in bad way, to be honest. But also, you know, the team that played the last test match. Um, and the main thing is that we got a short fight. You know, I, I always say, and it's, 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 it's not going to be easy, you know, whether you're facing a spinner or a piercer. Um, but I think once mentally we are in a position, because all, all of us have talent, all of us have ability. Um, so it's just mentally, once we are determined our mind to fight, uh, I think that will go a long way. Well, despite the poor results in Australia, the Windies captain praised his opening partner, Tej Narayan Chanderpaul. Well, you know, Tej, you know, I think he's, he's world class. You know, when you just look at, you know, simple leave alone that he has the a, a world class test batsman. Um, you know, so he has he has the patience and as you can see, he still has, you know, the shots also on some good Australian pitches. So he plays some, his strike rate was obviously... You know, higher than normal. Um, so, you know, I really think he has a very bright future. Uh, obviously, he's a very focused guy and you know, he's very determined. You know, so, you know, for, for sure, he will, he will make many, many West Indians pro. And I have no doubt about that. Our cricket commentator, Nikhil Udam Chandani, was also in the press conference. He joins us now. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Maria. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Well, Nikhil, we heard from the captain just now, Craig Brathwaite, and of course he says that the team that has been selected has the ability. However, he is just urging them to show up mentally. Based on what we've seen, you know, the names on the paper, do you think we have a balanced squad as we get ready for these test tours? Yeah, I think definitely probably have the personnel, given the way that the West Indies have gone about things in the last 12 months in test cricket itself. But the key would be can we get ready for this challenge and not sort of discount or take away anything from Zimbabwe? This is a team that many are saying around the world that are in the basically golden era of Zimbabwe cricket yet again. You look around, even up to today, winning the first ODI against Ireland, just won the T20 International Series against Ireland as well. And then not too long ago, beat Pakistan at the T20 World Cup. So they have found something in their cricket to churn up performances. And back in 2017, when the West Indies went there, Yes, we won the series 1-0 in the two-match series, but we had to fight, and it was led by Devendra Bishu. So I'm interested to see if Brathwaite, who, you know, failed as a, well, the West Indies failed as a team in Australia in much tougher conditions, now pretty much have a complete opposite in terms of going from fast bowling and faster pitches now to very spin-conducive surfaces in Zimbabwe, a lot drier. Let's see how they cope. Right, and Craig also had a lot of praises for Tej Narayan Chandapal, who is now his partner where opening the batting is concerned. Do you think that both men, you know, has what it takes to, of course, set that solid foundation that is needed, especially because, you know, batting always tends to let us down? Well, I think that was probably the most surprising thing to hear from the press conference for me. World just the class. fact that Craig Rathick <laughs> could say that he's world class after just two test matches, but... I mean, Craig Brathwaite will know better than most, having, you know, spent the amount of time he has spent in the game. I would have seen Tej up close, and I think what he showed us in Australia against what I would call the best bowling attack in the world right now, not only the temperament that he showed at the crease, but also the fact that he can play his shots as well. He's going now to Zimbabwe, which is very similar to a place he would have grown up in, in a Guyana. Very spin-conducive. I think it'll test another skill set of his, but I think it could be a lot more in his comfort zone, and this could be a real highlight as to what we can expect from this young man now beginning his test career. But I just think to hear that Craig Rath actually said the word world class and said it a couple of times um, tells you all you need to know about the quality of, of this young Guyanese. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see that. Of course, in 2017, the test star that you quoted, uh, Devendra Bishu, was the standout bowler. And earlier today, you posed the question about the spinners. Of course, Craig answered, do you think, though, Nikhil, from your own you know, analysis and, of course, looking at the numbers and whatnot, that the spinners that we have on the team can get the job done? 
I must say, Murray, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I asked him that question because I look at that 2017 tour. Bishu, basically, you could almost say, single-handedly took the West Indies to that victory. And I know, yes, a couple of batters chipped in with hundreds, but having that genuine turn of the, the cricket ball, a wrist spinner, but also someone that can actually spin the ball off the surface made a huge difference. And I look at the makeup of the three spinners they've selected. Roston Chase, our off spinner, but then the two left-arm spinners in Jamal Warwick and Gurukesh Moti, two very similar spinners who are not big turners of the cricket ball. So I think I've been a bit surprised as to the combination that they've gone with, especially when you've got someone like Arakim Kowal, who's played five first-class matches in the last season and picked up 23 wickets. Uh, and you have that genuine wicket-taking ability. So I think it's going to be a huge test for them going to a place like Zimbabwe, where you have extremely dry surfaces where the ball will spin pretty much from day two onwards, but you don't really have any genuine spinners in terms of those that can get that movement prodigiously off the surface. So it's going to be a challenge. Chase, Warrican, and of course, the third spinner in Morty, who's young in his career, all have experience. Moti, of course, has played a lot of cricket in Guyana, but the key will be can they take, and the West Indies on the whole, can they take 11 wickets or 10 uh, every innings? That, to me, will set up them in terms of victory. Yeah, you spoke about the challenge ahead, and we just have to remember that the coach, interim head coach, Andre Coley, and he was part of the press conference earlier today. Of course, you know, very eloquent in his answers, very confident in his responses. You know, it's a big test for him as well because um, he didn't say it outright, but you can read between the lines. And, of course, anybody that puts their hands up to accept an interim head coach job, their aspiration is to become the coach. So just the importance, Nikhil, of, you know, coach getting good results to ensure that, you know, he has good stocks when it's time to pick the real coach. Yeah, definitely. And why it's more challenging is that he would not have had the luxury of being with the team in that last tour. Probably wouldn't even had much say picking the team because he's only now come into the job. But so quickly, he now has to adapt into his planning, but also bring that level of cohesion that Phil Simmons, Roddy Eswick and others were able to extract. I mean, you talked to some of the players. They've mentioned that this test team is probably the most cohesive unit that they've played with in, in pretty much a decade. And I think the results have shown that. So can he be able to extract that consistency, but also that want and desire to do well at the highest level? Because, I mean, the West Indies, barring Australia, had an excellent year, if you look at Test cricket, defeating England, who are, you know, probably one of the best teams in the world at the moment. And I think it's tough for a man to come into a job like this and, and get those immediate results. But he does have the luxury of spending a lot of time with, I think more than half of the team would have been at the High Performance Center when he was heading it you know, back in 2011. So he does have, you know, pre-existing relationships with a lot of these players. And I think that should do him well. And he's also got a very capable captain in Craig Brathwaite, who has clearly determined the formula and a remedy needed um, to get the best out of his team. Nikhil, are you like some pundits who are feeling that Nkuma Bonner is a bit lucky to be on the Zimbabwe tour? No, I'm not, um, George. I think when you look at Nkrumah Bono uh, and also the situation of the West Indies batting, I think he's shown me more than enough. Um, first of all, not only you know in, in his short test career so far, but when I look at how he's done in spin conducive conditions where we're going at the, well, now in Zimbabwe, I think surely he's got to be one of the first names on your team sheet. Scored that m massive 100 in Bangladesh in 2021 to get the historic series win. But if you look at his performances in Antigua, which is a very slow, which has been very conducive to spinners in terms of the pitches in the Caribbean, Bonner stood out. That temperament, but also gritty nature about him, I think, is what makes him so valuable. And I don't think there's a lot, you know, other than Craig Braffitt, who can really spend a lot of time at the crease. So I think Bonner, for me, was, was a must um, for this tour. And I think he's done enough, even after a couple of struggles in Australia, uh, to deserve a, a good run in Test cricket. And in that vein, would he also be a certainty for the tour of South Africa? Yes, I believe so. All right, let's move on from, from, from Nkuma. The issue of the praise that Craig Brathwaite gave to Tej Narayan Chandapur today, do you get the sense that maybe Brathwaite, having spent a lot of time with the young man down under and realized the kind of character he is and perhaps saying, you know what, the biggest confidence boost I can give this boy ahead of his second uh, overseas series, uh, Southern Africa is a two series, is to say publicly that I believe he's world class. Do you think that this is some uh, a psychological attempt at 
boosting the confidence of this young man and that Brathwaite's words were carefully chosen and were strategic in their intent where Chandler Paul is concerned. Well, I think if you think about Craig Brathwaite, he's still the West Indies Test captain, so there will always be that element of strategy. I'm sure that had a big part to play. I mean, someone like Craig Brathwaite, who's just made um, the Test team of the year of 2022, if he comes out and gives an endorsement like that, you know that you're doing something right. But not only that, I think... Just the fact that he would have actually been at the other end watching Tej Nair and Chandler Paul and the way he went about things. I also believe it's factual as well because, look, it's not easy to face Josh Hazel, but it's not easy to face Pat Cummins, Stark, and the list goes on and on. And not only did Tej Nair and Chandler Paul face them, he also showed us that he can score against them, he can fight against them, even when he was battered and bruised and hit several times throughout the series. He got back up each and every time. So I definitely believe, well, yes, it probably is a confidence booster for a young man in his career, now about to take an, another challenging step going to Africa in a very tough place to play cricket where the West Indies haven't done well. So that could be a big part, but also I think it's justified because he did show that character in that fight. Whether he's world class, we'll have to wait and see, you know, maybe after 10 or, or 15 test matches. Yeah, let, let's go by the old adage that you're only as good as your most recent performances. And this is what the, I'm reminding you because you know these numbers, what our batsmen have been doing, well, what, what, well, what our batting average have been, Averages have been in 2022. And I asked this question of Fazir Mohammed yesterday, Nikhil, and he said that Zimbabwe will look at these numbers in planning for the series and will have no reason to fear this West Indies batting lineup any at all. I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, I think Faz is, is right. And literally, teams and oppositions will look to the fact that it's really been. The West Indies bowling attack, if you look in that England series and even Bangladesh and the Caribbean, that has won them that game and those games. And other than Craig Braffitt, the West Indies batting lineup hasn't come to the party in the way that they should have. So I think the one wicket they'll be looking at is the captains. If they get him out early and you break down a big part of that resistance, all of a sudden now you've got a new Devon Thomas who probably will bat at number four now, given the fact that they've dropped Shamar Brooks. You've got a Kyle Mears who's been in and out of the team, but hasn't really followed up on the consistency he began 2022 with. And then a low order in Jason Holder, Joshua De Silva, who can produce but have had a bit of a slow period and sort of low on production. And then, of course, the fact that the West Indies, you know, were just bundled out in Australia and or will be on low on confidence. So I think what the West Indies will have on their side is that a lot of these members, Blackwood, Holder, Roston Chase, were all part of that 2017 Zimbabwe tour. But I, as I said at the beginning of the, of the segment, the way Zimbabwe have played cricket across formats in the last three or four months, they are well, well on top of their game. And I think on top of the confidence as well. So that in itself is another challenge. And I think they'll be believing they can win this series. Not one, but probably two nil. Andre Coley, how, how would you, if you were advising him, would you say, Andre, just take the games as they come? Or, Andre, you need to have in your mind that this is an extended audition for the job of West Indies head coach permanently, which he wants. He didn't say he wanted it outright. Uh, but the, the, when, Cricket West, when Johnny Grave came here, he said, well, he is a candidate for that vacancy. So what, 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 what frame of mind would you ask Andre Cody to adopt? To see himself as auditioning or to just take it on normally? Well, firstly, let me commend uh, Mr. Coley because not only in today's press conference, but also on Sportsmaster, I watched the interview live. And I know you guys asked him several times whether, you, whether he believes he, he wants that job or not. And he's been very, you know, stubborn in his answer in the fact that he's very focused on this, on these two series and this three-month period. So I give him that, um, you know, credit for, for holding firm. But of course he's interested in it, George, and of course he wants it. And this will be a huge opportunity for him. Someone that, you know, would have been sort of on the sidelines, you know, working in assistant positions at the High Performance Center recently at the West Indies Academy, but now has an opportunity on, on the grandest stages of them all in a place where the West Indies haven't done so well when we go to South Africa. But what I loved about what he said today was that he believes the way that we need to improve is the intent. And I think he's spot on. And the batters specifically with the intent to score, because I find at times when the West Indies are under pressure, they just start to absorb the pressure, which is all well and good, which is something we haven't been able to do in the past. But as you can see where test cricket is growing now in terms of the trend, you look at England, teams are able to score and put pressure back on opposition. So I know Craig Braffitt mentioned spending 110 overs at the crease, but Coley second that, but he also said we have to have the intention to score. And I think that's where 
you know, he can really make a, a positive impact on this West Indies test team. Yeah, you see, you, 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 did, you did me like Cody just now, Nikhil. I asked if you would encourage him to consider this an audition and approach it like that or just approach it normally. And you told me everything except answering that question. Well, I think he has, to, he, has to, he has to take it as an audition, George. It's a huge audition for him. Absolutely, sir. Thank you very much, my friend, for your input. I always value it. And we'll talk again. Cheers, man. Thanks for having me. Nikhil Utam Chanjani, they're a cricket expert with that. And Mariah, with that, you can... Are, are you going away? Going where? To a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like going away on vacation again. Let's take a break. Mm -hmm. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment.